It was an ordinary Tuesday evening when my world turned upside down. My wife, Anna, and I had been navigating the calm waters of marriage for nearly two decades. Our life was a routine, comfortable, predictable, and, in many ways, blissfully uneventful. That is, until the night she sat across from me at our oak dining table, her eyes avoiding mine, a tension in her voice that I hadn't heard before. Mark, she began, her voice barely above a whisper, we need to talk. The seriousness in her tone made my heart race. This wasn't the prelude to a discussion about a leaking faucet or a weekend visit from her sister. This was something deeper, something potentially seismic. I put down my fork, my appetite suddenly gone, and braced myself. What's going on, Anna? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady. She took a deep breath, her fingers nervously tapping on the table. I've been doing a lot of thinking, she started, about us, about me. I feel like I'm at a crossroads, and I need. I need something different. Different how? The words felt heavy in my mouth. I thought about our years together, the memories we'd built. Wasn't that enough? Anna's eyes met mine, holding a mix of fear and determination. I want to explore relationships with other men, she said, the words hanging in the air between us like a thick fog. I felt a cold shock run through me. This was not a conversation I ever imagined having. You're joking, right? I managed to say hoping for a laugh, a smile, anything to indicate this was just a bizarre jest. But Anna's face was somber. I'm not joking, Mark. I need this. I need to find myself, to experience more of life while I still can. The room spun around me as the gravity of her words sank in. This was the woman I had loved and committed to, the mother of our children. How had we gotten here? And where did we go from here? Is this really what you want? I asked, my voice a mix of disbelief and sorrow. Anna nodded, tears brimming in her eyes. I'm sorry, Mark. I never wanted to hurt you. But I can't keep pretending I'm satisfied with the way things are. The ultimatum was laid bare, splitting our lives into a before and after. In that moment, I realized that the comfortable predictability of our marriage was a facade and the foundation we'd built was cracking under the weight of unspoken desires and hidden truths. The question now was whether we could, or even should, try to salvage the ruins. The silence that followed Anna's revelation was deafening. I sat there, staring at the remnants of our dinner, now cold and forgotten. My mind raced back through the years, searching for signs I might have missed, moments that should have warned me of the storm brewing beneath the calm surface of our marriage. Anna and I met in college, two bright-eyed students with big dreams and ambitious plans. We fell in love fast and hard, the kind of whirlwind romance you read about in novels. Our early years were filled with laughter, late-night talks, and dreams of a future together. We married soon after graduation, surrounded by family and friends who cheered us on, believing in the strength of our bond. As I sat there, lost in thought, the memories continued to flood in. The birth of our children, Michael and Sarah, had brought us even closer, or so I thought. We navigated the challenges of parenthood together, supporting each other through sleepless nights and endless diapers. Our life wasn't perfect, but it was ours, built on a foundation of love and mutual respect. But now, as I reflected on the past, I saw the cracks that I had ignored. Anna's restlessness, her occasional distant gazes, the times she seemed lost in thought. I had attributed it to the stresses of life, the ebb and flow of marriage. But had I been too complacent, too wrapped up in my own world to see the signs? Mark? Anna's voice pulled me back to the present. Are you okay? I looked at her, really looked at her, perhaps for the first time in years. The woman sitting across from me was not the same girl I had fallen in love with in college. Life had changed us, molded us into different people with different needs. And somewhere along the way, we had stopped growing together and started drifting apart. I don't know, I admitted, my voice barely above a whisper. I just... I thought we were happy. We were, Anna said softly, reaching across the table to take my hand. We are, in many ways. But there's a part of me that feels unfulfilled, like I'm missing out on something crucial. 
and I don't want to live with regrets, Mark. I don't want to wake up one day, old and gray, wishing I had lived my life differently. Her words resonated with a part of me I had long ignored, a part that craved adventure and new experiences. But the thought of losing Anna, of losing our family, was unbearable. As we sat there, hand in hand, the weight of our shared history pressing down on us, I realized that the future of our marriage hinged on what came next. Could I let Anna go, knowing she might never come back? Or was there a way to navigate this storm together, to rediscover ourselves and each other in the process? The answers eluded me, but one thing was clear, the comfortable predictability of our past was gone, replaced by uncertainty and the daunting task of charting a new course through uncharted waters. The days following Anna's ultimatum passed in a blur of confusion and heartache. Each morning, I woke up hoping it had all been a bad dream, only to be met with the harsh reality of our fractured marriage. Conversations became a minefield, every word weighed and measured, lest we tip the balance further into despair. I watched as Anna moved through our home with a newfound determination, making arrangements that would enable her explorations beyond the confines of our marriage. It felt surreal, watching the person I had shared nearly two decades of my life with, preparing to step into a world that didn't include me. The evening before her first departure was the hardest. Dinner was a quiet affair, with Michael and Sarah sensing the tension and retreating into their own worlds. Afterward, Anna and I found ourselves alone in the living room, the silence between us heavy with unspoken words. I'll be staying at a hotel tonight, Anna finally said, her voice steady but her hands betraying her nerves as they fiddled with the hem of her shirt. I think. I think it's better if I'm not here when I go on this, date. The word date hung in the air, alien and intrusive. I nodded, unable to trust my voice. The reality of her leaving, of sitting alone in her home while she was out with someone else, was a pain sharper than I had anticipated. Mark, I. Anna's voice broke, her composure wavering for the first time. She looked at me, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. I never wanted to hurt you. I hope you believe that. I looked at her, really looked, seeing the conflict and fear in her eyes. This was not a decision she had made lightly. I know, Anna. I believe you, I said, my voice rough with emotion. But it doesn't make this any easier. She came over and hugged me, a gesture so familiar yet so different now. We held each other, a lifetime of love and memories wrapped in that embrace. When she finally pulled away, there was a finality in her eyes, a goodbye that didn't need words. The sound of her suitcase wheels rolling away echoed through the house, each turn a reminder of the distance growing between us. I stood at the window, watching her car disappear down the street, feeling a part of me leave with her. That night, the house felt emptier than it ever had. I sat in the darkness, the void of her absence a tangible presence. Our photos stared back at me from the walls, mocking reminders of happier times. I wondered if we could ever find our way back to each other, or if this departure marked the beginning of the end. As I lay in our bed alone, the silence oppressive, I realized this was just the first of many departures. Anna was on a journey to find herself, leaving me behind to ponder the future of our marriage and my own path forward. The uncertainty was daunting, but one thing was clear, our lives were changing, and there was no turning back. The following days unfolded like pages from a book I never intended to read. Each morning, the sun rose, indifferent to the turmoil that had taken root in my life. Anna's departure had left a void, turning our home into a museum of memories we once shared, each artifact a testament to a life that felt increasingly distant. In the silence of her absence, I found myself at a crossroads grappling with a maelstrom of emotions and the stark realization that the values I held sacred were being challenged in the most personal way possible. Marriage, to me, had always been a fortress of fidelity, a commitment weathered by time but never broken. Yet, here I was, forced to confront the possibility that the very foundation I had built my life upon was not as impervious as I believed. The days Anna was away were the longest. I busied myself with work and the kids, trying to maintain a semblance of normalcy for their sake, but the questions lingered, gnawing at me. What did it mean to love someone? Was it enough to hold on to the memories of the past, 
or did love require a willingness to evolve, to accept changes that seemed antithetical to everything I believed in? I remember one evening, sitting on the porch as the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the yard. It was a moment of solitude that brought clarity. Love, I realized, was not a static entity, confined by rigid boundaries. It was a living, breathing force, capable of adaptation. But was I capable of adapting with it? The thought of Anna with someone else was a bitter pill to swallow. It challenged my sense of worth, my role as her partner. Yet, amidst the turmoil, a sliver of understanding began to emerge. Anna's journey was not a rejection of our life together but a quest for personal fulfillment, a concept I struggled to grasp but couldn't dismiss outright. The crossroads of values forced me to confront uncomfortable truths about myself, about the nature of love and commitment. It was a journey fraught with uncertainty, but one that I realized I needed to undertake. If Anna was on a path to self-discovery, perhaps it was time for me to embark on my own, to explore the depths of my beliefs and the capacity of my heart to embrace change. As the days turned into weeks, the initial shock of Anna's departure gave way to introspection. Conversations with friends and late-night reflections brought new perspectives, challenging my preconceived notions of marriage and fidelity. It was a period of profound personal growth, marked by moments of doubt but also by glimpses of understanding. The crossroads of values was not a battleground but a classroom, a place of learning and unlearning. It was here, in the crucible of change, that I began to understand the true complexity of love. It was a lesson in humility, in the recognition that the heart's capacity for love was far greater than the confines of traditional values. As I awaited Anna's return, I knew that the conversation we needed to have was not one of blame or recrimination but one of understanding and compassion. The path forward was uncertain, but the journey had already begun, and with it, the promise of new beginnings. Anna's return marked a significant moment in our shared narrative, one filled with apprehension and a deep-seated need for resolution. The days she was gone felt like an eternity, each one stretching into the next, filled with reflections and a growing sense of dread about the conversation that lay ahead. As I heard the familiar sound of her key turning in the lock, my heart raced. The door opened, and there she stood, the same yet irrevocably changed. The air between us was thick with unsaid words, each of us uncertain how to bridge the gap that had widened in her absence. We sat across from each other at the kitchen table, a battleground for the clash of emotions and values that had brought us to this breaking point. Anna looked tired, her eyes reflecting the weight of her journey, but there was also a flicker of something else, resolve. Mark, she began, her voice steady but softer than I remembered, I know you're hurting, and I'm sorry. This, this wasn't easy for me either. I listened, trying to keep the swell of emotions at bay, to understand the woman I loved and the choices she had made. Anna, I've been trying to understand, to see things from your perspective. But this, I gestured helplessly, this goes against everything I believed in, everything I thought our marriage stood for. Anna nodded, acknowledging the depth of our divide. I know, and I never meant to undermine what we have. But I realized I was living half a life, confined by expectations and roles that no longer fit who I am. I had to step out, to find parts of myself I didn't even know were lost. Her words, sincere and raw, struck a chord. The Anna sitting before me was not the enemy, she was my partner, struggling with her own demons, her own needs. Yet, the pain of her departure, the betrayal I felt, lingered like a shadow between us. This isn't just about you, Anna, I said, my voice rising despite my efforts to remain calm. What about us, our family? You say you're finding yourself, but at what cost? Anna's eyes welled with tears, a mirror to my own internal turmoil. I don't have all the answers, Mark. I wish I did. But I do know that I can't go back to the way things were. I'm not asking you to understand or accept this overnight, but I am asking you to try, to see that this could be a new beginning for us, not the end. The conversation that followed was a deluge of emotions, a torrent of grievances and confessions that had been dammed up for too long. We oscillated between anger and understanding, accusation and acceptance. It was a catharsis, painful yet necessary, as we laid bare the vulnerabilities and fears that had driven us apart. 
the breaking point, when it came, was not a shattering but a quiet surrender, a mutual acknowledgement that the path forward required something we had both been holding back, forgiveness. Forgiveness for the hurt caused, for the dreams deferred, and for the love that had been tested but not extinguished. As we held each other, amidst the tears and whispered apologies, I realized that the breaking point was not an end but a beginning. It was the start of a new chapter, one fraught with challenges but also brimming with the possibility of rediscovery and renewal. The journey ahead was uncertain, the roadmap unclear. But in that moment of reconciliation, we understood that our love was not a fortress to be defended but a garden to be tended, nurtured through the seasons of change. And with that realization, we stepped into the unknown, together. In the aftermath of our heart-to-heart, -heart, the world around us seemed subtly altered as if the very air we breathed was charged with the promise of renewal. The breaking point had indeed been a crucible, but from its intense heat emerged a newfound resilience in our relationship. Anna and I began to navigate the delicate process of rebuilding, each step forward a testament to our commitment to not just coexist but to thrive together. It was akin to learning a new dance, one where the steps were unfamiliar, and the rhythm was yet to be defined. I initiated conversations about my feelings, my fears, and my hopes for the future. These talks were often awkward, littered with pauses and uncertainties, but they were real, a far cry from the superficial exchanges that had characterized our interactions in the months leading up to Anna's departure. Anna, in turn, shared her experiences, her discoveries about herself, and her aspirations. She spoke of her need for independence and growth but also of her deep-seated desire to remain connected to me and to our family. We're charting unknown territory here, Mark, Anna said one evening as we sat on our back porch, watching the sunset. But I believe in us, in our ability to redefine what our marriage can be. Her words filled me with a mixture of hope and apprehension. The concept of an open marriage, of a relationship that defied conventional boundaries, was daunting. Yet, the thought of losing Anna, of not being part of her journey, was far more terrifying. We agreed to establish ground rules, boundaries that would allow Anna the freedom she sought while ensuring our marriage remained the bedrock of our lives. It was a delicate balance, one that required constant communication and a level of trust that we were still rebuilding. The children, sensing the shift in our dynamics, watched us with cautious optimism. Michael and Sarah had weathered the storm of our discord with remarkable resilience but they too needed reassurance that their world was stabilizing. We made a concerted effort to include them in our new beginning, ensuring they felt loved and secure amidst the changes. As the weeks turned into months, the changes in our household became more pronounced. Anna's occasional absences were no longer met with resentment but with an understanding that this was part of our new normal. In her absence, I found solace in hobbies I had long neglected and in the joy of solo parenting discovering new depths to my relationship with our children. When Anna was home, our time together was infused with a new intensity, a deeper appreciation for each other born from the crucible of our trials. We laughed more, talked more, and loved more freely. It was as if the specter of loss had stripped away the veneer of complacency, revealing the raw, beautiful essence of our connection. New beginnings are often romanticized as blissful and unblemished but ours was marked by the scars of our past struggles. Yet, it was these very scars that lent our journey its beauty, serving as reminders of what we had overcome and the limitless potential of what lay ahead. In this rebirth of our marriage, we found not the return to an idyllic past but the emergence of a future replete with possibilities. It was a future we were writing together, one day at a time, anchored by the love that had endured the fiercest of tests. As the new contours of our relationship began to solidify, I often found myself in moments of quiet reflection, pondering the journey that had led us here. These reflections were tinged with a complex tapestry of emotions, among which regret was the most poignant and persistent. I regretted not seeing the signs earlier, the silent cries for change that Anna had emitted like distress signals into the night. I regretted the years spent in comfortable complacency assuming our marriage was immune to the ravages of time and the evolving nature of human desires. Most of all, I regretted the pain I had seen in Anna's eyes, the price of her freedom etched in the lines of her face. But as I dwelled on these regrets, I also recognized their futility. 
the past, with all its missed opportunities and unheeded warnings, was beyond my reach. What mattered now was the present and the future we were striving to build. Anna, too, had her share of reflections and regrets. One evening, as we sat in our rejuvenated living room, surrounded by the comforting familiarity of our shared life, she voiced her own contemplations. Mark, do you ever think about how things could have been different? She asked, her voice a soft murmur against the backdrop of the night. I turned to her, taking in the vulnerability in her gaze. Every day, I admitted. But I also think about where we are now, the growth and the understanding that's come from all of this. Anna nodded, a wistful smile playing on her lips. I regret the hurt I caused, the turmoil. But I can't regret the journey, the discovery. It's a strange dichotomy, feeling gratitude for something that brought so much pain. Her honesty struck a chord within me, echoing my own internal conflicts. Our journey had been tumultuous, marked by moments of despair and isolation. Yet, it had also been transformative, a crucible that had forged a new depth to our connection. In those reflections, we found a shared space of understanding, a recognition of the complexities that defined our marriage. The regrets, while real and valid, were also the catalysts for our growth, both as individuals and as partners. It was in this space of shared vulnerability that we found healing. We talked about our fears, our hopes, and the dreams we still dared to harbor. We talked about the future, not as a distant, abstract concept, but as a living, breathing entity that we were shaping with every choice, every compromise, and every leap of faith. The reflections and regrets, rather than driving a wedge between us, became the threads that wove us closer together. They were reminders of our humanity, of the imperfections that made our love real and enduring. As we moved forward, the shadows of the past remained, not as specters to haunt us but as guideposts, illuminating the path of empathy, forgiveness, and unconditional love. Our marriage, reborn from the ashes of our old life, was a testament to the resilience of the human heart and the boundless capacity for renewal. In this new chapter of our lives, reflections and regrets were not the anchors that held us back but the wings that allowed us to soar into the unknown, together. As the landscape of our marriage continued to evolve, a new kind of tranquility settled over our home, one born from the storms we had weathered together. Anna and I had ventured into uncharted waters, and while the journey was far from smooth, it was ours, and it was filled with the promise of discovery. Our new arrangement, unconventional as it might have been, began to feel less like a compromise and more like a canvas, a space where we could each paint our dreams without obscuring the others. Anna's ventures into the world beyond our marriage brought new stories, new perspectives that she shared with me, enriching our conversations and broadening our horizons. For my part, I found strength in my independence, in the rediscovery of passions that I had shelled in the name of familial duties. My evenings spent alone were no longer cloaked in loneliness but in the pursuit of interests that rekindled my sense of self. Yet, with every step forward, there were moments of doubt, of reflections that bordered on regret. There were nights when the bed felt too large, the silence too loud, and I wondered if the price of our new beginning was too steep. In those moments, I found solace in the open lines of communication that had become the bedrock of our redefined relationship. Anna and I had learned to navigate the delicate balance between autonomy and intimacy, ensuring that no matter how far we roamed, we always had a haven in each other. Our paths forward were not without their obstacles. Societal norms and the expectations of those around us often clashed with the reality of our situation. We faced questions, some veiled in curiosity, others in judgment, about the sustainability of our choices. Yet, every challenge served as a reminder of the conviction that had guided us to this point. We were not bound by the conventions of others but by the mutual respect and understanding that had blossomed from the ashes of our old life. Our commitment to each other was no longer a chain but a choice, a daily decision to embrace the complexity of our desires and the depth of our bond. As I look to the future, I am filled with a cautious optimism. I am aware that the terrain we navigate is fraught with potential pitfalls, that the balance we have achieved is delicate and requires constant attention. But I am also buoyed by the knowledge that we have faced the abyss and found within it not despair but the seeds of a new beginning. Our paths forward may diverge at times, 
as we each seek fulfillment in our own way, but they are bound by the invisible thread of our shared journey. We have learned that love is not a fortress to be defended but a garden to be nurtured, its beauty lying in its ability to adapt and grow. In this new chapter of our lives, we move forward with the understanding that change is not an adversary but an ally, a force that propels us toward greater understanding and deeper connection. Our story is a testament to the resilience of the human heart and the boundless capacity for renewal. And as we continue to write this story, one day at a time, I am grateful for the companion I have in Anna, for the love that guides us, and for the paths forward that stretch out, filled with light and shadow, toward the horizon of our shared future.